What's going on, you guys? Um, I really, first off, I really want to apologize for not um, uploading like daily updates and scores and whatnot as I should have been. Is because like, like I said, as I mentioned before, I struggle with consistency issues and uh, putting the effort and energy to get up and making um, the time to do so. So I really want to apologize on that, and I promise myself to be more consistent. But I gotta make make sure I follow on that promise, you know. And that's my problem. So it's just ba basically staying true to yourself and driving to actually doing what you want to do in the in the future. You know what I'm saying? So with that being said, I want to get that out of the way. And uh, excuse me, sorry about that. <laughs> and uh, I want to begin uh, giving you a new sports update. So for those of you tuning in, welcome to NJ's uh, the NJ of Sports. It's my new YouTube name. Because I thought about uh, exactly what I want to do for myself. So, this reason for the name change is uh, NJ of Sports. Because I really wanted to follow my own self and uh, promote a brand going on. And uh, make sure I have something. I, I can keep this trend going. Because I really wanted to be much more creative in what I want to do. And follow my dreams of, of um, the field that I'm pursuing in. So, yeah. Okay, so that's a quick update I want to get out the way. So I apologize for not uploading as I should have daily, you know. So, but here I am. And I'm promised to make sure I stay consistent on that. So, with that being said, here we go. We're going to give you what looks like to be the final wrap up of week two of the 2020 NFL season. So, let's get a quick recap of the scores around the league, starting with Thursday night's game between the uh, Cleveland Browns and the Cincinnati Bengals. Browns win that game 35-30 to on Thursday uh, behind the strength of uh, a really good rushing attack of the Browns as both Nick Chubb and uh, Kareem Hunt combined for over 200 yards rushing and three touchdowns on the ground. So Baker Mayfield had 217 yards passing, but unspectacular. And he threw like two touchdown passes, one of them to Odell Beckham Jr., making his first grab of the season. A little decent performance on his behalf, but still. But Baker also threw an interception, but regardless, it's whatever. Now, his counterpart, rookie Joe Burrow out of LSU for Cincinnati, he had a better performance, over 300 yards passing and three touchdowns, but still didn't come up with the win. So, And this is a guy that I'm really looking forward to to see exactly what he can do in his career. But Cincinnati, no one being accessible as it is, it's not going to last long, but hopefully... He gets better product, better weapons, and better help, and a better defense around him going forward. So, that's a quick roundup on that. Uh, the Tennessee Titans and the Jacksonville Jaguars. Tennessee wins that one 33-30 on the strength of four touchdown passes from Ryan Tannehill, who's basically had a career revival in uh, Tennessee since he got picked up uh, last season on a one-year deal. And... Um, Hopefully he can build on his momentum because this is a Tennessee Titans squad with some new additions that uh, made it all the way to the AFC Championship game last season. So that's a real big surprise, and we're looking to see where we go from there. And, of course, Gardner Minshew had a big day as well. So, And I'm looking forward to see what he can bring to the table because there's a lot of potential in these two guys in uh, Gardner Minshew and we'll see what he can carry for Jacksonville going forward. Maybe he could be the quarterback of the future. So who knows, but, hey, time will tell. Um, next game up. The Tampa Bay Buccaneers and the Carolina Panthers and Tampa. Tom Brady's home debut with his new club after 20 Hall of Fame seasons with the New England Patriots. He began in a new Bucks uniform last week in New Orleans in which they lost by um, double-digit figures. But this time, a little bit of a bounce-back performance. But even though Brady was still unspectacular, only 217 yards passing, one touchdown and one pick, and the lone touchdown pass was to... Wide receiver Mike Evans, who had a better game than last week. Uh, he had like seven catches for over 100 yards in that one touchdown, of course. But the biggest thing was the rushing attack. Even though their incumbent starter, Ronald Jones, had 23 yards on seven carries and a score, Leonard Fournette was the bigger story. Rushing 12 times for 103 yards and two touchdowns. And the second one was the 46-yard run, but that pretty much put the game on ice as Tampa Bay wins that one against Carolina, 31-17. And also behind the strength of that ferocious buck defense that got to Teddy Bridgewater six times 
and forced three takeaways off that offense. So it was a really big statement win for Tampa Bay. Hopefully they can build something on that. And, of course, Rob Gronkowski still hasn't been very productive. He only had two catches last week, but this time he had none. So the first two games has been an absolute dud for Gronk. So we'll see exactly what happens, and hopefully Carolina can fix their issues as soon as possible. On a defense that's been atrocious and an offense is it's getting there, but still needs to find footing and consistency. So that's that. The Pittsburgh Steelers got one over the Denver Broncos 26-21. Um, on the strength of a Steelers defense that got seven sacks and two takeaways off of Denver's offense. And also knocked the Broncos starter Drew Locke out of the game with a um, shoulder or elbow injury. So he'll be missing two to six weeks. And Jeff Driscoll pretty much took over the um, rest of the way with over 250 yards passing and two scores, but also threw an interception and got sacked six times. So, yeah, there's a statement win for um, Pittsburgh on Ben Big Ben Roethlisberger's uh, return tour, as we like to call it. Uh, the Los Angeles Rams uh, easily, comfortably, with a 18-point win over the uh, Philadelphia Eagles in the city of brotherly love, 37-19 on a pass-heavy attack from uh, Jared Goff and Sean McVay and company. And uh, Philadelphia, so far, two games, it's been a mess. They blew a 17-0 lead over the Washington football team, a nameless Washington football team. And lost 27-17 last week and got sacked a bunch of times by that defense. And today, this I mean, yesterday, this week, Carson Wentz did not get sacked, but he was very inconsistent uh, yesterday. Uh, all over the place, through two costly interceptions, one of them that pretty much sealed the chance of any comeback for the Eagles. And um, their offense just can't get running, and their defense has been a real big question mark. So it's basically a mess uh, going forward, and... And I would not be surprised if um, if this keeps up, then the Eagles may turn to a uh, young rookie, uh, Jalen Hurts, out of Oklahoma. So, but any time can tell. We'll see what happens. Uh, the San Francisco 49ers defeated the hapless New York Jets comfortably, 31-13. But it came like at a really ultimate cost. Um, the Niners have lost four key starters heading into this game being Richard Sherman, Debo Samuel, George Kittle, and now D. Ford, all out with injury. And now they lost four more best starters in that game during the game as well. Raheem Mostert, Jimmy Garoppolo, uh, Nick Bosa, and Solomon Thomas. Now, from what I got heard, heard on the injury report update is that Garoppolo's ankle injury isn't too severe, so he'll have a chance to play uh, next week, still in the Meadowlands, at MetLife Stadium, against the New York Giants, who are still uh, winless as well, and hapless themselves. Raheem Mostert's likely to be out with an MCL sprain, and uh, we're still waiting on the updates of both Solomon Thomas and Nick Bosa, especially Nick Bosa, because that's the main superstar for that uh, Niners defense that was ferocious last season, en route to a Super Bowl run, so... But it's feared likely that both Thomas and Bosa are likely going to be out for the year with torn ACLs. So we're still waiting on confirmation on that to see how that goes. So if possible, then that's a real big blow to the Niners defense that really thrived on pass rushing. You know what I'm saying? So and with that being said, to shore up the uh, injuries on their D-line, they signed a one-year deal with, they agreed to a one-year deal rather, with uh, free agent D lineman uh, Ezekiel Anza, who spent last season with the Detroit Lions and was still a free agent before the Niners picked him up. So hopefully that'll be a big bust. And as for the Jets, it's been a hapless two two weeks of blunders. And Adam Gase, has, the head coach of the Jets, has been laughable at. Le'Veon Bell's on IR, as we all know, but then in this game against the Niners, there's been a whole bunch of blunders. Like on the first play of the game, they gave him an 80-yard rushing touchdown by Raheem Mostert. And then gave up a 55-yard run on third and 31 by a returning Jarek McKinnon, deciding to go for a field goal, deciding to go for a field goal on 20 when they were trailing 24 and three. It was just like a complete mess from top to bottom, and it's gonna get even worse for the Jets if they don't fix things right away. But <laughs> it's been pretty laughable at the Jets so far. And as for the Niners. Uh, their players have been really anxious and nervous to play again next week at MetLife Stadium because that's where they were when they played this game yesterday. So now they got to come back to that field against the Giants this Sunday to complete a two-game East Coast road trip in New York City, or rather East Rutherford, New Jersey. 
So it'll be interesting to see what's up. Anyways, moving on, the Buffalo Bills and the Miami Dolphins. The Bills held off a Miami Dolphins comeback to win 31-28. Jared Goff had an amazing game with three to four touchdown passes. One or two of them already to uh, his new newly acquired target, Stephon Diggs. You know, Pro Bowl wide receiver Stephon Diggs, who was acquired from a trade from the Minnesota Vikings for two draft picks. And Stephon Diggs is really, really getting into the groove with his new club. And through two weeks of the season, he's already accrued for almost 400 yards receiving and three touchdowns as a result. And especially in this game where he had eight catches for over 150 yards and a touchdown. So it's been really, really sound fundamental for the Bills offense and the defense as well, even though they kind of almost slipped up. And the Bills are have a hot 2-0 start to the season. So Sean McVay's group, I mean Sean McDermott's group, excuse me, is clicking on all cylinders. And if you're a Vikings fan, you got to be shooting yourself in the foot for not only trading away a guy this caliber, but for the performance that you had to endure witnessing on your own game as well. Yes, and I'm talking about the next game, which was the Indianapolis Colts against the Minnesota Vikings. And the Vikings came up as an absolute dud against the Colts squad that had some adjustments and got blown out of the water 28 to 11. Because for the majority of the game, the entire game was 28 to 3 in favor of Indianapolis with Phillip Rivers and aging Phillip Rivers at the helm. And a game in which the Colts defense forced three interceptions off of Kirk Cousins. So that was a snooze fest. And by the time the skin the Vikings scored a touchdown, it was already too late. So a dud for the Vikings. Terrible performance from Kirk Cousins. Great win for Indianapolis. But that too didn't come at, at a very price without a price. Um as of uh, now, Ricky, a young safety, Malik Hooker, has now officially uh, been ruled out for the season with a torn Achilles. So that's a big blow to their um, looks to be a star-studded defense. Because, of course, this is a squad that added um, DeForest Buckner in a good trade with the San Francisco 40, 49ers during the summer. So, especially at the safety position, without the services of Hooker and what an incredible young guy he's been. It's going to be tough to see exactly where that defense is going to go for going forward. But, hey, it's always going to be like next man out to see how they can adjust to it, you know. So, like I said, anything can happen. Next up, the Green Bay Packers and the Detroit Lions. Green Bay wins this one comfortably despite trailing 14-3 uh, to uh, three at some point in the first half before rolling through comfortably to win this game in a blowout, 42-21. Aaron Jones had a really tremendous game, rushing for 168 yards and two touchdowns. Aaron Rodgers had almost 300 yards passing and two touchdowns through the air. And the Lions just found a way to lose another game creatively and become like the hapless joke that they are. I mean, they already lost real badly in embarrassing fashion to the Chicago Cubs after leading comfortably at one point from the majority of the game. And if I'm at Patricia now... I know my seat's got to be getting warmer because once you're on the hot seat and it still don't do nothing, you're gone. That's basically what's going to happen. Uh, next up, speaking of absolute blunders, here's the Atlanta Falcons and the Dallas Cowboys. The Atlanta Falcons held uh, two different big leads of 26 to nothing and 29 to 10 for the majority of the half, heading into the third quarter, and yet they still found a way to lose this one embarrassingly. Dak Prescott and Ezekiel Elliott led Dallas to a furious comeback and then on the suing onside kick after Dallas scored to make the score 39-33 with under minutes to go. Atlanta, their onside recovery team, decided to treat the onside kick at, like it was a normal punt and Dallas on their ensuing drive would score a game-winning touchdown to win this one 40-39. If you want to talk about embarrassment, that one tops the kick. And if you're Dan Quinn, your seat also has to be getting warmer. And if this doesn't improve, you're gone as well. And I feel bad for him. Because this is the coach that took Atlanta to a Super Bowl uh, a couple years ago with a great defense and league MVP season behind Matt Ryan. And, of course, we all know what happened after that 28-3 against New England. Now, everyone wants to bring up 28-3, how they blew that one against the New England Patriots in Super Bowl 51. But that was against a New England team that was a master, that had a master head coach and knows how to adjust and adapt as the game goes on. That was different. And, of course, that was a huge lead. But at least Atlanta didn't blow that same score again. But they did it twice in embarrassing fashion. So, <sighs> that's embarrassing. Uh, next up, 
You have the New York Giants and the Chicago Bears. Chicago holds off a New York comeback to win 17-13. And surprisingly, the Bears are 2-0 as to begin the season. Uh, the Giants had to go through injuries, but not without paying the price themselves, like I said, as their franchise running back, Saquon Barkley, is two out for the season with a torn ACL. Now, this is a real big blow to a Giants team that's looking to find its identity under Daniel Jones and company, so... It'll be interesting to see where they go going forward, and it's a rough start, as we all know it. Uh, the Arizona Cardinals took care of business in Washington, D.C. to take care of the football team, 30-15, to behind the strong performances from Kyler Murray and DeAndre Hopkins, and a young, stout, improved defense, as we all know it. So Arizona's 2-0, looking to ride behind the hot streak and the hot hand of Murray and company, so... And what and I saw this young kid making his potential making uh, movements uh, early on last season, and this guy has all the tools in the world to become a great quarterback. So Arizona could become one of the biggest surprises this season. But like I said, as I said many times in this video, anything can happen. So next up, the Kansas City Chiefs, the reigning Super Bowl champions, coming here to LA to take on the Chargers. And um, of course, before this game, Tyrod Taylor was declared out due to a, a pregame breathing problem that he suffered. So, 7th overall pick from this past draft, Justin Herbert took over the starting nod. The starting nod. And surprisingly, Kansas, uh, San Diego, I mean Los Angeles rather, excuse me, jumped out to a 14-6 uh, lead at the half. But Patrick Mahomes, being Patrick Mahomes, led him to a furious comeback, finding the likes of Travis Kelsey and Tyree Kill uh, in the waning moments of the game to force overtime. And Harrison Bucker would nail the game-winning field goal in OT to give them a 23-20 win. So... Comeback win for the Chiefs, but an impressive debut for Justin Herbert, who had over close to 300 yards passing and a couple of touchdowns at his belt. So, despite that, uh, head coach Lance Lynn said that, uh, despite that, uh, Tyrod Taylor might still be the starter when healthy. So, yeah, if that's the case, then whatever. But it'll be an absolute waste if that happens. So, I wouldn't stick with that. I would stick with Herbert because of what this guy can do and whatnot. So... I'm really excited to see what happens, but, you know. Uh, the Baltimore Ravens and the Houston Texans. Uh, Baltimore wins that one comfortably, 33-16. And once again, proving that Bill O'Brien is not the right guy to lead for Houston. With the fact that he traded away all-pro wideout DeAndre Hopkins to the Arizona Cardinals for David Johnson, who looks like a past shell of his former self before his injuries robbed them the last two years. And it's becoming a dud. And if you're a Houston fan, you got to be scratching yourself and screaming out loud saying, why did we even bother with this guy in the first place? So, yeah, that's about it. And then you had the Sunday night game between the New England Patriots and the Seattle Seahawks. Now, before the game, tragedy already struck as we know it. Uh, as earlier this week, uh, legendary head coach Bill Belichick of the uh, New England Patriots, arguably held as one of the greatest coaches of all time, he um, lost his mother at the age of 91 due to uh, um, probably natural causes. I have to look more into that. But, um, yeah, that's basically what happened earlier this week. And now, right before the game started, we had even more terrible, tragic news that former Pro Bowl running back James White uh, his parents were involved in a car accident up in his hometown, and um, tragically, his father did not survive the crash, and uh, his mother was left in critical condition. So it was a really, really tragic time and, and a way for the game to start. So James White was inactive for this game because of that, and... Um, of course, like myself and many other people around the world, our thoughts and prayers are going out to uh, James White, his family, and of course, everybody that was affected by this um, tragedy. It's just, it's just a terrible way to go out like that. So, and at this time point in time, as of course people dying left and right due to police brutality and the COVID nineteen situation, all we can do is just pray for better things to come. So. Thoughts and prayers are with you, James White. And we love you, man. And this is coming from a Patriots fan, too. And it's really, really tough for for someone to go through something like that. So, yeah. 
Anyways, um, on to the game. Uh, it was uh, contested for the most part. New England's defense got off to a good start with a pick six on Russell Wilson on the opening drive before the Seahawks came and tied it up. It was kind of a back-and-forth affair for the most part before Russell Wilson and company pretty much showed us exactly why he's that great. Wilson had an unbelievable game, over 300 yards passing at five touchdowns through the air. Won the DK Metcalf, who was matched up by reigning Defensive Player of the Year, Stephon Gilmore, on him. And it was a chippy matchup throughout. And there was even one time a fight broke out on the Seahawks' sideline between the two. So it was just a chippy bout, an anticipated matchup that we was looking forward to. And, um, yeah, let's say Metcalf got the best of Gilmore on that one. So, Russell Wilson was incredible. Cam Newton was incredible, too. And he made the truck. And somehow, someway, he was able to get the Patriots back to within five to make it interesting again. And um, on the ensuing final drive, down at the one-yard line with two seconds to go in the game, a touchdown to win it, but instead he... On an option keep, as he normally does to score his most of his career touchdowns. Uh, at the one-yard line, two seconds left to go. Instead of running further to the outside, he ran to the inside, where he was met by a brick wall of Seahawks defenders. And the Hawks were able to win this one, 35-30. to 30, Which was the same score as the uh, Browns... Bengals game Thursday night, so yeah. New England falls to one and one, and Seattle improves to two and zero, oh, and that basically wraps up all of yesterday's games. And we're gonna close out week two with the Monday night game between the Las Vegas Raiders, making their debut at the new home stadium in Las Vegas, hosting the New Orleans Saints, who will be without Michael Thomas due to a uh, high ankle sprain that he suffered last week against Tampa Bay. So. But the Saints, with a good defense and a Hall of Fame quarterback with Drew Brees, can make something happen. So, And, of course, the Raiders coming off of a huge 34-30 win over the Carolina Panthers last week. Look to build momentum off of that with Josh Jacobs, their star running back, and um, hopefully some more improving play of Derek Carr. This will be a, probably a good shootout. So I'm really putting all my, my, uh, my butts on that one. So, yeah. Anyways, that's basically the um, this week in the NFL. Now we're going to shift over to the NBA, especially in last night's uh, Game 2 of the Western Conference final matchup between the Los Angeles Lakers and the Denver Nuggets. And the Lakers won last night's matchup on a 105-103 victory thanks to a, a game-winning buzzer-beating three-pointer from Anthony Davis, power forward for the Lakers, to give the Lakers a 2-0 lead in the series. And, Anth and that three-pointer, Anthony Davis, to go along with that, had a real big night himself with uh, 31 points to go along with nine rebounds. No, 11, yeah, with uh, nine rebounds and uh, two assists. A big night for AD. LeBron James had 26 points and 11 rebounds, while KC and Contavious Caldwell-Pope and Danny Green both had 11 respectively. The Denver Nuggets proved to us, however, exactly why they belong in this stage in the first place, with the likes of Nikola Jokic and Jamal Murray leading the way, as both of those guys have 30 and 25 points respectively. Michael Porter Jr. finished third in scoring with uh, 15. And the Nuggets, being as resilient as they were all year, becoming the first team in NBA history to uh, come back from two different 3-1 series deficits to force a Game 7 and win the series in seven games, in a decisive game seven. They did, they did it against the Utah Jazz in the first round, and they did it in the last round against the heavily favored L.A. Clippers team that was bound to go at it with the Lakers in a highly anticipated battle for L.A. matchup in the conference finals. But, hey, in the NBA playoffs, everything happens for a reason. Now, speaking of which, Wednesday night will be game four of the Eastern Conference final matchup between the Boston Celtics and the Miami Heat. The Celtics, after having their leads being blown away by the comeback heat as, as they are, forced, managed to make this series more interesting with a 117-106 win over Miami in Game 3 to cut the series deficit in half as Miami leads, now leads the series 2-1 with Game 4 on Wednesday night. And Jimmy Butler, star forward for the, um, the Miami Heat, said that the Heat has a chance to prove exactly what they really are after that Game 3 loss. So, 
yeah, this will be a really interesting series. And let me know exactly who y'all got in uh, both conference matchups. Like, do you have the Lakers making the NBA Finals? Do you have the Heat making there? The Celtics? The Nuggets? Let me know exactly what type of Finals matchup are you anticipating in the comments section. And who you got in the Finals if that happens. So, yeah. Now we're going to shift over to hockey. And I apologize for not um, making a score update on the Tampa Bay Lightning New York Islanders Eastern Conference Final matchup last week. But um, on Thursday night, the Tampa Bay Lightning beat the New York Islanders 2-1 in overtime thanks to an overtime winner from uh, Anthony Sorelli and beat the Islanders four games to one to advance to the Stanley Cup Finals for the first time since 2015. So this is their second trip in five years. Um, and with that, you have a Dallas Stars-Tampa Bay Lightning Stanley Cup Finals matchup already underway as we speak. And speaking of the finals, game one was already this past Saturday as the Dallas Stars came through with a 4-1 to thumping of the Lightning to draw first blood in, in this year's Stanley Cup Finals. Uh, goals from uh, the likes of Jamie Oleksiak, Jason Dickinson, uh, and of course, Yoel Kiervanta. Yoel Kiervanta, excuse me. And of course, Joel Halsey, Joel Hanley to uh, each tally for Dallas's four goals. And a lone goal for Tampa Bay was from Yanni Gord in the first period. So after that goal from um, Gord, the Dallas Stars ended up winning, uh, scoring the next three to put the game on ice. So Stars draw first blood, and hopefully the Lightning can uh, make some adjustments to rebound in tonight's Game 2 matchup. So yeah, Game 2 is tonight at 5 o'clock Pacific. On NBC or NBCSN to make sure to tune into that one. And if you're a hockey fan, let me know exactly who you got. You got the Stars, you got the Lightning. Like, who do you think has the better hand of the matchup, you know? And, uh, finally we got some uh, new updates in Major League Baseball. It's been a while since I mentioned anything about baseball. But, this week is indeed the last week of the Major League Baseball's short pandemic 60-game regular season. Yeah, so the regular season's coming to a close this week with already several teams clinching a spot in this year's playoffs, the expanded playoffs. You know, the Los Angeles Dodgers, where, who has the best record in Major League Baseball at 37 wins, already clinched a playoff spot behind a league MVP candidate season from new, this year's acquisition. Mookie Betts will be acquired alongside David Price in a blockbuster trade this past offseason. And a resurgent year from Corey Seager and whatnot, and Clayton Kershaw, above all else. And they became the first team in the league to clinch a playoff spot. And then you follow that up with the Tampa Bay Rays, who was one of the biggest stories this year, leading the American League East Division by three or three and a half games over the New York Yankees. They clinched their third straight uh, trip to the postseason. And speaking of the Yankees, Despite a mired slump which had them a game below 500, they were on a hot streak after some of their key players returned to the lineup in the most crucial time yet of the year. Had them on a hot streak, nine games above 500, or back above 500 rather, and have already clinched their fourth straight playoff spot and their 22nd trip to the postseason since 1995. So that's a... And that came on the heels of the San Diego Padres beating the Seattle Mariners to clinch that postseason spot. Now, speaking of the Padres, they're in the playoffs. Yes, you heard that right. For the first time since 2006, the San Diego Padres are in the playoffs. Now it's going to come down to see exactly who will win the National League West Division between, the, between them and the Dodgers, but the Dodgers are most likely to win it. But the Padres are back in the postseason behind the league MVP candidate performances from uh, Manny Machado and Fernando Tatis Jr. Even trade line, deadline acquisition uh, Mike Clevenger from Cleveland. It's been interesting throughout. And more surprising playoff clinches, the Chicago White Sox, who are leading in the American League Central Division by a good margin, have clinched the postseason spot for the first time since 2008. On strong season performances from Tim Anderson, who is uh, battling uh, for the American League batting title, and a resurgent year from young pitcher Luis Giolito. So, a resurgent White Sox in the postseason for the first time since 08. 
And the Minnesota Twins, uh, two days ago, clinched a playoff spot after an 8-2 win over the Chicago Cubs. And the Oakland Athletics, who were in a comfortable lead to clinch the American League West division, have already clinched their third straight postseason spot and hoping to win their first division title since 2013. Now, as far as the rest of the uh, playoffs go, the Atlanta Braves can win, wrap up the American League East division and clinch a playoff spot. The Chicago Cubs can do the same with their chances of making the postseason and clinch a playoff spot. Now, the Toronto Blue Jays, who made a surge and then who made a surge, uh, leapfrogging the Yankees for second place in the East, but then got thumped in the Yankees and thumped in their series against the Yankees in the um, the last series, in which was like a home run derby, a home run derby from the Box Bombers. I apologize if I stutter because I really have a uh, problem with my speech patterns and how to speak clearly when I talk fast, so do forgive me on that. Uh, so yeah, the Jays are minor in the slump, and they're barely a game above five hundred. And uh, same thing with the Houston Astros, the reigning American League champions. They're a game above five hundred in their first season after the scandal was unleashed of them cheating to win the 2017 World Series against my Dodgers. And I'm a Dodger fan. But I likely don't care at this point because baseball's filled with cheating for years anyway. So that's like whatever. And of course, speaking of the Astros, their 37-year-old star pitcher Justin Verlander, arguably one of their one of the greatest pitchers I've ever seen, is out for the year with Tommy John surgery after playing just the opening game of this season back in July, and then was on the DL throughout because of a sh- a elbow injury that basically hampered him for much of the season. And, he, and apparently he suffered a setback during his rehab start. And now he's going to need Tommy John surgery. will not only miss make him miss the rest of the season, but also all of next year as well. So that's a big blow for the um, Houston Astros trying to vie for a postseason spot. And the Toronto Blue Jays hopefully can clinch a postseason spot as well. But the National League, it's much more tighter. Maybe the St. Louis Cardinals are free-falling and the Milwaukee Brewers or Cincinnati Reds can leapfrog ahead for the final playoff spot. The Philadelphia Phillies, with the injury to their star outfielder Bryce Harper on the DL, hopefully they can make something happen and clinch the seventh spot in the in the uh, wild card spot as a result. But like I said, anything can happen. And surprisingly, the Miami Marlins are probably on the verge of clinching a playoff spot. Just back in July, when the season started, their players and staff were hampered by the COVID-19 outbreak. Then they came on a hot stretch. They were in first place in the National League East at one point. But Atlanta made sure to reclaim their spot. And, uh, yeah. So that's basically the playoff scenarios and everything that's going to be at stake for this final week of the regular season as playoffs will begin with the wild card series starting on the 29th, which is next Tuesday, starting with the American League wild card series, whoever is going to clinch that. So, like I said, to recap... Who are in the Major League playoff, Baseball playoffs this season are the Los Angeles Dodgers, the San Diego Padres, the Tampa Bay Rays, the New York Yankees, the uh, Chicago White Sox, the Minnesota Twins, and the Oakland Athletics. That's about all who basically have clinched a playoff spot this season. And um, we'll await to see exactly who will clinch the uh, remaining spots for this final week of the regular season. So it's going to be a toward stretch as we all know it. And, uh, yeah, that's basically about it. And let me know exactly who you all think has a chance to win the World Series. Like, do you think it's the Dodgers after years of trying and mishaps and feeling to do it all and coming up short? You got the Yankees, who you felt that had all the talent, all the firepower in the world, had no holes within them, but until the injury bug got them. Like, who do you think? Or who do you think will be a dark horse contender to make something happen? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, just let me know. Anyways, it's a long video, but that's all the talk I have in this week's sports update. Uh, let me know what you think in the comment section. Who do you got and exactly what sports around the world do you have on your resume? Let me know in the comment section who you got in the NBA playoffs, who you got in the Stanley Cup Finals, and what do you think of the NFL season so far, and who do you think will make the... Uh, the playoffs in the final week of the major league baseball's regular season so let me know what you think in the comment section make sure to hit the like and subscribe button and hit that bell uh, button so where you get my uh, daily notification updates on my videos make and of course tune in to make sure you get my uh, daily video updates once again i apologize for not being consistent but i will make sure i do that from now on 
So tomorrow I'm going to give you a video on the recap of the um, Raiders Saints game that's going to happen tonight. As well as a reaction to uh, tonight's Stanley Cup final matchup, Game 2, between the Lightning and the Stars. So I'll give you reactions on that tomorrow. Like I said, make sure you hit the like and subscribe button. Let me know what you think in the comment section. Hit that bell so we can get my daily notification updates on my videos. And that's all I have today. I'm Nick Johnson. This is your daily news updates, and I'm signing off. Peace.